Let's all say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us give honor to God on the day with our hand praise. Hallelujah. 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 He knows our name on today. And we ought to know his name. His name is Jesus. The one who we adore. The one who we honor. The one who we praise because he is so good to us. This morning. Yes. Come on, lift yes. it. And oh, how he talks. Everybody with stand me. to your feet. Oh, yeah. Oh, how. Oh, how he tells me that I am in his own. Seventeen, and it reads, "For God so loved the world yes, Lord. that He gave His only begotten Son, you, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, yes. but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved." Our opening song: "He lives, He lives."
crooked cross. But Jesus died. If you lift your hands and just thank him for dying. so thankful. We are so grateful unto your name. We thank you, Lord, for what you did over 2,000 years ago. Yes. We thank you, Lord, to know that you have risen. Hallelujah. And this day, Lord, you have all power. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. You have all power. Yes, Jesus. And we thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you for this day, Lord, that we could come out, hallelujah, to celebrate your holy and what you have done for us, Lord. Yes. How you save us from a miserable life of sin. Jesus. And now, Lord, through your power of the Holy Spirit, go, Lord, to the hospitals, the homes, those who bedridden, Lord, those who bereave at this time, hallelujah. Touch their hearts and minds, Lord. Give them the power, Lord, to realize that you are God, and besides you, there is no other. And, Lord, we want you to bless the service this morning. Lord, come into our presence. Let us feel your presence, Lord. Give us, Lord, let us rejoice, hallelujah, to your name. And we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. Lord, remember our pastor as he comes forth with the living word, O oh Lord God. Bless him in a mighty way, O oh Lord. And we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. I will clean.
praise God on today for the service thus far. And before I introduce the uh, choir again and our speaker, I was taking pictures the other day, last Sunday exactly, and I came across these spikes. <laughs> it wasn't nails that kept him on the cross. It wasn't even these big spikes that they nailed in his hand that kept him on the cross. But it was his love for you and his love for me. His love for you, Deacon Hamilton. His love for us that kept us. Oh, we thank him on today. We have so much to praise him for. It wasn't these spikes. And we praise God on today. And I want us all give God what's due to him. If you're able to stand on today and join in with these selections, let's stand and give God the praise. And after these songs, we're going to hear the word of God from our pastor, Elder William e. Smith. Let's receive them both with thank you, Jesus. Maybe you see it.
can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Wave at somebody and say, because he lives, all my fears are gone. I'm glad I know who holds my future. My life is worth living because he lives.
This is Resurrection Sunday. And these songs we have chosen for us to stop and remember, for he has been such a great God. I'm going to do something a little different here now. And I know we're on TV, but I want you to begin the testimony service right now, wherever you are. It's just begin to just thank the Lord. Just begin to thank the Lord. We're so glad to see Deacon Hamilton in the house this morning. Is God being good to you, anybody? There is power, power, wonder work. Oh, in the blood. sitting at home on, on Sundays and you got relaxed, but I think God owes us a stand-up praise right now. Hallelujah. We owe God a stand-up praise, if it's anything. I will lift up my voice and give him the praise because he's worthy of all of our praise. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank all of you who are watching by way of Facebook Live. We thank you for joining us this morning. This is such a blessed morning as I walked in and I looked at this cross. Semblance of what our Savior has done. I stopped and I paused and said, you save a wretch like me. Yes. Will somebody say right with me, he saved a wretch yes. like me. And I'm just so happy that he has done so. It's good to be back in the house again. Amen. God has blessed us to come. I worry your patience, but we want to talk to you on the real deal this morning. He is risen. He is risen. Somebody say, he is, he is risen. Our text today is coming from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 through 8. Chapter 15, he says, verse 3, he says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. And I want you to know, notice that last word, according to the Scriptures. And that he was buried, and he rose again the third day, Notice again, according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, and that he was seen of about 500 brethren at once, and of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then all of the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me, also as one born out of due time. Amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. He is risen. We pause today as we celebrate the greatest event other than the birth of Jesus Christ in the Christian world. And that is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. 
We find today many people don't believe in the resurrection. But Paul made it very clear to us in our text that he is risen because of the scriptures. And Paul also acknowledged, I saw him for myself, and I know that he is risen. There are critics today that says that Jesus didn't die, Jesus didn't suffer, Jesus wasn't raised from the dead. But when I look at the empty tomb this morning, I don't see nobody there because he said he is risen. The tomb stands as a symbol of the great power of God. If Jesus is raised from the dead, we that are alive here today, if we should die in Christ, we too will be raised again. And I think somebody ought to just praise the Lord for that alone. Because of Jesus' resurrection this morning, we have not only hope beyond today, but we have hope even today. The Bible also tells us that, that because he was risen from the dead, he has overcome death, hell, and the grave. In the 42nd verse of our chapter today, uh, chapter 15 rather, he says these words. He says, so also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised, what? In incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. But it is raised in glory. Amen. It is sown in weakness. And it's raised in power. It is sown in a natural body. But it will be raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. As it is written, the first man, Adam, died. He was a living being. But the last Adam became a life giving spirit. We praise God today. When he rose, he declared all power in heaven and in earth was in his hand. And today, brothers and sisters, we are we have that power today that can really we can rely on. When you feel like you want to get sad, just call his name Jesus. When you're looking around, things not be going the way you think they should be going, but just speak the name of Jesus. If Jesus rose, we have hope. If he didn't rise, there would be no need for us to be here at this church this morning. But he rose and he declared all power in heaven and earth was given unto him. Paul says here, we are sown perishable. We, born, we were born in sin. We were shaping in iniquity. Amen. Because of Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden. But thank God for his love. You, see, when I, you know, when you're reading the Old Testament and reading the Word of God, you become fascinated at the fact that God had a plan all along to save us from our sin. Now, you say, preacher, you should know that. But when you really read his word and you begin to see how he started in Adam and how he came through the prophets and how he came down through Jesse, amen, now through David. And how he came as a child, amen, born in Bethlehem. And how he lived in the world, how he established his way of salvation, how he went to the cross and died for our sin. And today he is risen. That ought to give everybody here hope that goes beyond the grave. The present circumstances you may be in today are only but for a moment. One day, if we should... Hold out to the perfect end, we shall, this body will be raised incorruptible. In this body, we have all kind of things that go on. Sometimes the limbs don't work right. Sometimes the blood pressure is high. Sometimes the sugar is not regulated. But Jesus rose to give us power that one day when he comes back and raises us up, this old body is going to go on back where it was. And we'll have a new glorified body. This is, the, this is the joy of the believer today. And I want you to understand, despite how it looks now, trust God's process. Tell somebody, trust God's process. Not some man's process. Not some person's process. But trust God's process. 
God takes us through things sometimes to develop better character in us. God takes us through situations so that we can rely on him more. Because here lately we've been relying on ourselves. And God allows things to come so we can reach beyond the break and hold on to him. And this is why the, the cross of Calvary is so important. And one other point that I want to leave with you before I go. If Christ had not died then we will not be resurrected. If Christ didn't come up out the grave, we will all be right here today standing ready to go to hell. Excuse that word. But aren't you glad for the love of Christ? I don't have, somebody just help me, help me preach this for about a few more minutes. I'll be done. Hey, man, God loved you when you were in your mother's womb. And he said, I'm going to save you. Anybody happy that you are saved? If you're not happy to be saved this morning, let me let you know on a secret here. You can be happy because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In this resurrection, we are going to be changed. The song said we're going to be changed from this mortal to immortality in a twinkling of an eye. As fast as you can bat your eye, you're going to be changed. Now, one of the things I'd say to you this morning, the reason the resurrection is so, so important. We now have victory over sin's dominion. Aren't you glad? You can speak to the devil right now and tell him to back up. Because Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. You, come on, say it say to him right there. Back up off me now. Amen. You, you, you have power now. To fight sin, you, you have power now to take the battle to him. Hey, he's been bringing the battle to us. We have power because of the resurrection. We can take the battle to Satan. Amen. Amen. Get the crook out your neck. Amen. And say right now, I'm walking in the power of God. Because of the resurrection. Amen. We overcome sin. Amen. Because this body was sown in dishonor. When Adam sinned, he caused all of that stain of sin to come on us. Amen. Blood is hard to get out, isn't it? Anybody can tell me what can get blood out? Come on, somebody. Dawn, that's right. Dawn can get it out. Get you some Dawn, it'll get that blood stain out. But you want to get something sin out, you're going to need some red blood. Amen. Sin has in, brought itself into our being because of Adam's fall. And Satan is trying his very best to take you back from which you, once you came. Amen. Satan is trying right now. Some of us is getting on up in age. Amen. Some of us are coming along. Beware. Satan wants to get you back out in that world. You've been saved a long time, but be watchful. He doesn't care about that. He wants to destroy you. But today we have assurance because Jesus lived, I can face today. Because Jesus rose, I can face what's going on tomorrow. Jesus rose today gives me the assurance that I have power over sin in my life. Amen. When we invite Jesus Christ into our lives today and stand before him spotless, Amen. We come before him just, just as if we had not sinned. Jesus made us sinless. Amen. There was nothing we could do. There was nothing we could do to change our, our life in sin. But Jesus said, I'm going to go down and I'm going to die. And I'm going to let my blood save you, Amen. you, 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 and all of you. Anybody glad you saved today? Anybody glad that God, God thought about you? Amen. Anybody glad God thought about you? Amen. There's some time to go around, we're going through the day, we, we don't think about folk, we just, they, we know they're there, but just don't think. But think about it. over 2,022 years ago, God thought about Elder Smith. Amen. He thought about you. And the Bible, the song tells us that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And the blood of Jesus does save us from sin. We were born weak. Paul puts it this way. We were sown in weakness. But through the resurrection of Jesus, we are raised in power. Can I say, somebody say, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up. 
Amen. Yes, I was born in weakness, but today I stand in strength because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't have to hold your head down. Amen. You don't have to walk around with your, your mouth stuck out. You don't have to walk around like you want to have a fight with somebody. You got to understand when Jesus rose from the dead, he gives you power to tell the devil, back up now. I'm a child of the king. We were born weak. He had no power to resist sin and temptation. Don't you remember those days? Somebody say, I remember those days when I didn't have power to tell the devil no. But how many of you got the power today can tell the devil no right now? How many glad you know you got the power to tell the devil no thank you? I don't see nobody clapping your hand, but you know you got the power. That God, you can say to the devil, I don't have to serve and worship you no more. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We have power now to resist the temptation because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The power of sin does not have to have dominion on of us today. The resurrection broke that chain that had us bound. Amen. The Bible tells us all power is given unto him who believe. Though he were dead, yet shall we live. Do you know what it means? to be resurrected and to have power over sin. Amen. Lastly, I want to say to you this morning is that the power of the Lord tells us today we have power over temptation. Say it with me. I got power over temptation. I got power over broken relationships. I got power over financial bondage. I got power over every circumstance. Say it with me. I got power over every circumstance that comes in my life. And let me tell you something. You, you know, I know we've been shut up. I know we haven't been able to come. But you've got to refortify yourselves. What COVID told us and helped us to see that we got to truly trust God's process. I don't care how much you wish to come back together, God did not allow it. Because he wanted us to Start reaching beyond our limitations and reach out to him to trust him for everything. If, you know, everybody can trust God when everything is good. You got a little few coins in your pocket, body feeling pretty good. But God had to say to us today that if you want to know me better, you got to trust my process. Amen. God's power is, 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 is demonstrated. When Jesus rose from the dead, amen, he made a comeback. In the sports world today, just last week, Tiger Woods came to the Masters. You know, Tiger last year broke his leg in three or four places. He still has rods in his feet and his, his, his legs. And they were talking about if he won the Masters, he, it would be one of the greatest comebacks that ever was. Well, he didn't win the Masters. But what he said, the fact that I'm able to walk, that's victory just the same. How many you can say, I have had a comeback. I made a comeback. I was walking in sin. Amen. I had rods of sin in my legs. Amen. I could not walk. Amen. I was blind. I could not see. But I made a comeback because of the resurrection of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I have now made a comeback. I'm no longer, I'm no longer Satan's child. I'm now a child of the king. Anybody happy that you're a child of the king this morning? Anybody happy that God said today, you can make a comeback because of the power of the resurrection. Let me tell you, no matter how far you have strayed from God, no matter how long you've been down the wayward path, through the resurrection, you can make a comeback. I'm talking to people who are not saved this morning, who are watching. The way to come back is through repentance. Water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Those of you who have accepted Jesus Christ already. 
and are walking in this way, you can still make a comeback. You can understand through this message this morning, despite what I've done, despite where I've been, despite how much I have dishonored God or not have obeyed God, I can still make a comeback because of the love of Jesus Christ. I don't know nobody that will forgive you on the spot. You know, humans don't have, we don't have that ability. We like to hold stuff. Somebody say, I like to hold stuff. But when you come to God, he'll take what you've done and put it in the sea of forgetfulness. forgetfulness. Now, the only way you get it is you go out there in that sea. And I don't encourage anybody to go out in the water. Some of y'all scared of water anyway. Amen. But don't try to go out into the Atlantic Ocean and try to find them sins. Because you know what? You could get drowned out there if you're not careful. God has allowed us to make a comeback. Paul said he had nothing to be proud of. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. Touching the law, he was blameless. What he said, he says, I counted all loss so that I can win Christ. And I was reading that this week and I said, Paul had it right. He was taught by Camellia. First of all, he was a true Hebrew. I mean, he wasn't them, wasn't them made Hebrews. Man, he was a true. Amen. He was, he was taught by Gamaliel. But on the Damascus Road, when the voice came, when he was on that animal, he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? He says, I'm Jesus, the one you persecuted. And the very next words, he said, Lord, what will you have me to do? Amen. He says, I want you to go down to Damascus and there you will find Ananias. He will tell you what you ought to do. And Paul, when he talks about it in scripture, he says, he says, all I've been through and all I've suffered. He says, I want to know him. How many want to know him? I want to know the Lord in the power of his resurrection. I want to understand what he did for me at Calvary. I want to feel that. I want to understand that he suffered a death that he needed not to have suffered, but he loved me so much that he called me by my name. How many of you know God knows your name this morning? Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he talks me, with me. Amen. I was listening to that song this week. Amen. Uh, when David was going through, he would, I would call him. He said, I'm listening to this song by Tasha Cox. He knows my name. How many, of you, how many of you know he knows your name? Come on, say, I know he knows my name. Sometimes I'm walking sometimes through the valley of the shadows of death, but he still knows my name. Uh, sometimes I'm suffering uh, sometimes through sickness. I'm suffering through depression. I'm suffering through whatever, but God still knows my name. Paul said today, I want to know him. Amen. In the power of his resurrection. Today, people want to know people. You know, we got legislators. People say you're friends of this legislator or that. Hey man, but they made much so, so much they can do to you. The most of the time, they'll give you a card and say, "If you need something, call." Amen. But this man I know, you know, he don't pass out cards. He's already done stroked us with his blood, and when he put his blood on you, you are marked for life. Yeah. Amen. I, how many of you believe that this morning? Yeah. You, th this is why the resurrection is so important because the world ain't getting no better. Lord, it's not getting any better. We were in Columbia yesterday, and I want to thank the Lord. I mean, we were passing right by the mall. Amen. Did not know what was going on. Man, they had sled and everybody. I want to thank God. The Lord blessed Sister Linda, Sister Linda Felder. Um, she was working there yesterday. Amen. Thank God. You know, and see when, see, when you're under the blood... When you when you under the blood, see some of us we walk out. You know, uh, danger is always around us. 
No matter how careful you are, danger can just come up on you. And let me tell you, the blood of Jesus covered those. And fortunately, no one has died. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Isn't that wonderful? That while you in this world, sometimes you riding down the highway, half sleep in the morning, trying to get to work. Danger is all around. But somebody say, his love. His love covers me. Come on, say his love. His love coming. And, and, and this is why I want to know God more. I want to know him in the power of his resur resurrection. You see, they, uh, Paul here said, I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy. How many of you can say that this morning? I'm unworthy. I, 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 God really don't owe me nothing. Amen. But I owe him so much. How many of you can just testify? Come on, we going, I'm done, I'm done. How many of you can say today, I owe God everything? Amen. I, I owe him all that I have, everything I have, everything I hope to be. I owe it all to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we come to him confessing our sins and we invite him into our lives, he reaches down to whatever level we at and brings us up. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? God will get down in the slop with you. He'll get down in the mud with you. Because you know he, you are important to him. All he's asking of us today is to trust his process. To love him today. God should have given us all a blast of judgment. But his love, surely said this morning, he would not come down from the cross because he loved us. We did not deserve to be saved. But he loved us. Nudge somebody say he, he loved us. God should have given us a blast of judgment. But he loved us. In closing this morning. Hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, is he is risen. Thank God. Thank he, is risen. he is risen. And today God want to save somebody. We serve an awesome Savior. He's in the world today. Amen. The empty tomb is just a reminder of who we serve. People going looking at the tomb. Amen. But it reminds us that he didn't stay there. But he rose from the dead. Amen. How many of you glad he rose? How many glad you, you accepted the Lord Jesus as your Savior this morning? And today we have victory over death. We have victory over sin's dominion. We have the power to come back. And finally, we have the power to one day see the Lord's face. I want to close with this. In the same chapter of Corinthians, chapter 15, and we always read this at funerals. But I begin to read it from just not reading it, you know, giving the benediction over a person who is deceased, but this is for the living. In verse 51, where it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. That we should not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Listen, this old corruptible will put on incorruption, and this old mortal will put on immortality. And when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, good God Almighty, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall come to pass the same. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is is the law, but put your hands together right here. But thanks be to God, which given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then Paul gives us something to go home with. Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, 
always abounding in the work of the Lord, that you know that your work, your labor, is not in vain in the Lord. There is hope. Those of you who are watching today, the Bible tells us in Acts 2 chapter and verse 38, it says to repent, to be baptized, everyone, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. The promise is you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the only way to be saved. It's the only way. We cannot put you in heaven and we cannot keep you out. But you got to come through the door. We offer Christ to you this morning. Amen. Today, if you come today, only a look. That's all it takes. All you got to do is turn. Oh. Yes, you. He away from sin. From sin. Just one look. Just one look. Just one look will bring. Stand where you are because we have some requests that we want to pray for. Somebody needs to come back. Maybe that's what you need this morning. We are praying this morning for Mr. Haywood Jacobs of Columbia, who is in the Prisma Baptist Hospital. Mr. Richard Odom, here in Denmark, going through a health challenge. His sister, Michelle, health challenge. Mr. George Dean, who recently lost his wife, is going through a very difficult time. Sister Bobby Falls texted us and she's having some difficulty this morning. Praying for our Deacon Isaac. Sister Isaac is taking him to VA this morning. We want to thank you. Also want to pray for all those who suffered in the, the shooting yesterday at Columbiana. For how he protected everybody. And I just want you to lift your hands and give God your request. And we're simply going to say, Father, we stretch our hands to you. No other help we know. If thou would draw yourself from us, where can we go? We thank you for the power of your resurrection. We thank you for your power that sustains us daily. Your people bring your, their request to you this morning. The one names that we've called, there are so many others that are in need. We just don't have their names. But Lord, you know where they are. You know what they're dealing with. Bless them right now and keep them in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, as we leave this most sacred and hallowed ground, help us to go out now to serve, to serve humanity to be the best light that we can be to represent you in this world. Bless us now and keep us 